Ahoy! New World Eternum is now confirmed to have an open beta. Yes, this open beta includes PC, but it wouldn't be New World if it didn't come with some further issues. So we have our first confirmation here that the start date and time will be September 13 at 9 a.m. PT, with the end date being only three days later on September 16 at 9 a.m. PT. It will be cross-platform for PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. What's already interesting here is that this is not handled like a normal PTR. Usually on PTR we only have two regions, we have North America and Europe, but in this case we will have South America and APAC or AP Southeast as well. So there will be a lot more influx of players based on their expectations at least. If these expectations will be fulfilled is obviously a completely different question. Uh, that really depends on how many console players will be interested this time and how many PC players uh, can be bothered joining. Now, it seems like this may be streamable because it is an open beta. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about an NDA anymore or anything like that. Uh, so through that, I think compared to the first uh, beta that we had, uh, there will be a significantly higher influx of players uh, simply because the game will get more attention through Twitch, through people being able to stream it as far as I understand it. And that was one of the massive differences between the playtest that we had for console now and pre-release New World, because back then the hype was so big, but back then people were also able to stream it. I don't expect that we will see similar numbers, but I do think that we'll see uh, higher numbers than you would see on a normal playtest for a patch, because there is something to try out here, and I think a lot of PC players especially uh, want to know what's going on. Now, unfortunately, uh, you won't really get to know what's going on in the way you'd be hoping for. In this next section, we can first of all see a free skin that you can get. And you can see along with that, we have a title here, Eternian Trailblazer, if you participate in the open beta. Uh, then you get the members of the Eternian Adventurer for the gloves for reaching level 10, footwear for reaching level 15, leg wheel for reaching level 20, and then the other pieces, chest and headpiece, uh, for reaching level 25 with any character. Why only 25? Because open beta progression will be capped at level 30. And that is obviously wild, because, yeah, we have the overhauled new player experience where the level cap would make sense and if this was just a brand new game then the level cap would make sense as well but we have multiple pieces of end game content some of which were already tested in the previous play test that console players were able to access where they were able to make a higher level character and it appears that this will not be the case here we can see here, for example, we have our uh, general summary of everything that's happening, the customization and all that stuff. Everything you can do in the game up to level 30, you will be able to do arenas as well because it unlocks level 20. You can do Amrine, you can use mounts at this point, you can, use, oh, you can join factions, you can join influence races too. And that in itself would actually be cool and you have this exclusive mount. Uh, and I would like to at some point see a server that's like level 30, level 40 capped or something uh, that's just focused on PvP because I think the lower level PvP is actually really, really fun. But this is not the place for it. First of all, there's only three days, so there's only going to be uh, so much of PvP and influence race going on. And beyond that, this is the preparation for uh, what we're seeing next month and we need to... <laughs> test the upcoming content uh, not because we want to you know experience the content early and so on but because new world has a track record of having issues with any major piece of content they're releasing and much of that not all of that but much of that had some degree of feedback on ptr and had some level of improvements and if we find out after release that things are very very buggy uh, there is significantly less time or potential to fix that before people will drop off because of that. And this is particularly true for the free-for-all PvP island as well as the new raid. And neither of those things will be accessible, or at least as far as I understand it, the PvP island uh, will be a max level zone, so with a level 30 character you won't really be able to do much there. And I find this highly concerning because this is a weird sign that we haven't heard anything about those aspects and uh, in particular the raid that even was locked away on the previous test. 
uh, where it could just go very, very wrong. And based on history, I'm not expecting it to go well without any further testing and, and bug fixing and feedback. So yeah, very concerning by itself. And I don't really know what to make of that. I could see them delaying uh, at least the raid uh, even beyond the announcement or beyond a new world attorney releasing because they really have not shown anything of it they haven't really tested it on a larger scale uh, and it might just be that they realized we, we couldn't finish it so we're not going to say that yet we will uh, release the game and say oh actually it comes later wouldn't be the first time that they've delayed content by by far or it could be that they're trying to keep everything about it secret so no one gets an advantage but then that won't really matter anyways because the advantage will be there the moment uh, New World Eternum releases because PC players will already have uh, fully geared characters uh, that are ready to jump right into the raid which any console player won't have so the first raid clears will very 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 likely be on PC anyways so that doesn't seem to be a logical reason either so yeah I guess they might not want it to be cleared before the, the game or like the new game quote unquote releases but I just think it's a, a very high risk to take with, with little reward in that regard. But it is possible that they're still planning to do an additional PTR or open beta test afterwards. We don't necessarily know if this will be the last test they're doing. So maybe there will be a dedicated test for the higher level stuff. Maybe that will only be a PC PTR. Maybe they don't want to you know, spoil the experience for console players earlier uh, when there might be uh, more bugs in that area and they might just be like, okay, we just put this on PC. So the PC players who are used to bugs uh, can quickly test that and tell us what's up with it. Uh, maybe, maybe that's what happens, but very hard to tell. Then again, with three days, it would hardly be enough time to test that stuff anyways. What will be interesting and what could possibly also be a reason as to why it's being handled the way it is, is that they might not even have the files for the raid included. Uh, maybe not even for the PvP thing, but that would be kind of weird. Uh, because of data mining. They might not want any of that to end up on New World Database uh, before New World Eternum launches. Or uh, the other way around, it could be that we are getting all of the information this time through New World Database and New World Body uh, and very little through the actual game because we're locked to level 30 there. Uh, so it might be that that will be our main means of getting information. Could be going whichever way but uh, yeah it's it's definitely weird that we're not at least getting a note as to why things aren't available or why we're locked to level 30. What is of course very interesting about the start date and the end date here is that it ends on September 16. Why is that? Throne Liberty releases a one day after that so people will have something to do in between I guess, until New World Eternum launches I guess uh, might be the idea here but definitely seems like there would be some degree of correlation between those two dates. There's also something else that I wanted to mention separately here, which is that there was an issue with the seasonal leaderboards, uh, which were meant to continue like everything else in season five, but won't be continuing or have already been ended. I figured this wasn't really newsworthy on its own, but I'm gonna include it here just to mention it. So if you try to achieve any rank, you can't work towards it anymore. It's all locked in already. However, this only applies for the leaderboards. I checked if this also applies for the uh, progression of the season itself, and that's not the case. You can still get the rewards from those uh, tasks that you can do on all the challenges and everything. So you can get your prismatic scarab basically if you want to. So at least some of the things still work, but of course, if someone was grinding to anything here, uh, this is very frustrating and it would have been otherwise a fairly easy season for people to grind towards things because there's just not a lot of people playing at the moment so I think some people might be very frustrated about this. Once we know more I will of course let you know so consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you'd like to get notified and if you'd like to support me further you can do so on Patreon. Thanks to all of my patrons where I do exactly that and thank you for watching. Hugh Sloth, out.